Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group, and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is knowledge management. A key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module explains the art and discipline of knowledge management. It's part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. Here, we'll talk about KM in terms of its need for a knowledge audit, guiding principles, dissemination tools, and need for culture change. Like many of the practices covered by this course, knowledge management is an old story that's becoming new again, thanks in no small part to advances in business process and collaborative computing technology. In a nutshell, it's the practice of systematically and continually, for it's a practice, not a project, capturing, controlling, and disseminating organizational intelligence among its workers. In other words, what the organization knows by virtue of its people. While this sounds eminently logical and straightforward, the practicality is quite challenging because most of this knowledge is locked in people's heads, so-called tacit knowledge, versus explicit knowledge which is written down in the form of procedure manuals and the like. Managing knowledge often begins with what's known as a knowledge audit, which is an investigation into where knowledge is produced, where there may be a need for further input, and where knowledge transfer is required. Expressed less formally, it's a dedicated exercise aimed at codifying who knows what about what, what nobody seems to know enough about, and where it would be valuable for people to share what they know. Now, because they themselves often don't even know what they know, unlocking and codifying it can be and is difficult indeed. So myriad methodologies have risen over the years to provide guidance in this regard. We've found this Knowledge Acquisition Unified Framework by Dr. Tony Rem to be particularly illuminating. So let's take a moment here to run down the steps. Step 1. Define Domain Knowledge which department, division, location, and what knowledge is pervasive there. Use a knowledge map, also known as expertise location. Include customers and clients who may have wholly different sets of knowledge that internal people do. Then decompose the knowledge domain. Parse the task among subject matter experts, managers, and so forth, using taxonomy as a guide as to how to organize the collected knowledge. Determine interdependencies. Identify what information and which people rely on input from others and reconcile any inconsistencies. Recognize knowledge patterns. Analyze with an eye toward a process of connect, collect, catalog, and reuse. And pay attention to patterns that emerge to make your job more efficient. Determine judgments in knowledge, which is to say, separate fact from opinion objective from subjective. Perform conflict resolution. Where findings are fuzzy, determine how to achieve clarity or when to eliminate an element from consideration. And then capture and catalog the knowledge. Conducting interviews, building wikis, online forms, etc. A process also known as knowledge sharing. The preceding serves as an effective guide to identifying and gathering knowledge from around the organization. Actually disseminating it, however, requires not one but a collection of technologies, the precise makeup of which depends upon the nature of your business, your staff, and your existing infrastructure. There are a few essentials, though, that you'll want to look at and install in some combination or another, including social computing applications like wikis, blogs, and shared bookmarks. Uh, you know, YouTube, Dig. Online presence tools for instant communication, things like Yammer, which is essentially corporate Twitter at its base, 
Skype, Digsby for instant messaging. Collaborative workspaces for project participation. eRoom from Documentum, Box.net to a degree. Workflow or BPM systems that can automatically link you, perhaps through LDAP or other directories, to the right people, even if you don't know who they are. One of the larger challenges is finding ways to enable people to efficiently share tacit knowledge without forcing them to endure the time and pain of making it explicit. In other words, to expose them to mechanisms through which their knowledge can simply come out during the natural course of events. This has the added benefit of leaving them feeling empowered as valuable contributors and wanting to contribute more, rather than feeling like they're being forced to give up what they know and thus relinquish their organizational power. Web conferencing is one way this can occur, as the electronic coming together for a common purpose allows for all contributions to be automatically captured if it's set up that way. Thus, anything anyone says, types, or otherwise communicates can be stored and mined for knowledge later on, without having anyone feel put upon or simply silly as they fumble around in an effort to articulate what they know they know but can't easily explain. Simply observing people in action is another way to bring their tacit knowledge to the surface, as they almost certainly tap into information reserves while they work that they're not even consciously aware of. Watching them perform and taking note of their thought processes is a great way to get them to share, even if they never speak a word. These last comments bring us to something I'm sure you already know, that all the best intentions and all the best technology will mean little unless your organizational cultural actually supports, nay, encourages, people to share what they know. So making knowledge management a regular way of life often requires that you make change management a big part of what you do. Simply installing new systems for wiki creation, online presence, and collaboration isn't enough. And truth be told, if you had to choose, you'd be better off changing the culture than changing the technology. This module explained knowledge management's key guiding principles, dissemination tools, and culture change ramifications, all of which must be taken into consideration when seeking to extend information management to knowledge as well. Having now completed this module, you may next wish to review the section on email management, another area of keen interest on today's organizational landscape. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctored test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.